you're ready. Sure. Started the timer and here is the question. I'm not sure if you have recently done this, but Yes, so if you have read and understood, kindly tell me, considering it critical care station, how would you go ahead and manage this patient? Yes, hi. So I'll uh, first introduce myself, I'll wash my hands. Good, uh, good. This patient is... Uh, this is not an examination station, so you're not washing your hand. You're uh, just going to, yes, uh, examiner will ask you what is your candidate number. You'll tell your candidate number and then you'll begin. How would you manage this patient? All right, so this patient is a trauma patient. He's yes. clearly unwell, so I'll go and attend the patient. Uh, I will According uh, to ATLS protocol, yes. Yeah, I will approach Very good. You have to say that. Okay, next. A to E assessment. So I'll first start off by uh, ruling out any catastrophic bleeding, uh, airway. Airway is the first one, right? Yeah, airway and cervical spine. Triple yes, very good. Spine. Triple immobilization. Of how, how would you make sure that airway is patent? Uh, if, if the patient is speaking, then I will be reassured that the airway is patent. If the patient yes. uh, is not So you speaking. look, yes. Yeah, you, so I can look and listen and feel to the All airway right. yes. of uh, airway obstruction or uh, any airway compromise. Yes. And, um, if I have any concern, I would either use a suction or um, if the patient is unconscious, I can yes. uh, apply a Gidel's airway or a pharyngeal airway or nasopharyngeal yes. airway. Um, and then I will uh, call for help. I will put out a trauma call. And um, Okay. How and would you, coming to point B, breathing, how would you reassure patient is breathing? So in terms of breathing, I will have to assess uh, uh, I'll check if the trachea is central and um, I will obviously listen to any signs of uh, if there is any airway compromise like stridor or there is any heavy Yes, breathing. this patient is having difficulty in breathing and has unstable vitals. What would you do? Okay, come to the point, please. All right. So, yes. So uh, after uh, checking if the trachea is central, I will go and assess the chest. I will look for any signs of any uh, obvious trauma or injuries. Um, and then I will um, uh, listen to the chest yes. and palpate to check for chest expansion or any tenderness. Um, yes. If I feel that there is any uh, reduced air sounds in any side, um, then I would uh, have to maybe percuss, see if there is any hyperresonance for the need of uh, insertion of any uh, needle. Yes, patients' vitals are not stable. What measures would you do to make sure patient becomes stable as early as possible? So in, in terms of his um, hemodynamic yes. stability, I could uh, look for the BP, the blood pressure and yes. the heart rate of the patient. Yes. If there is any derangement, uh, if the patient is hypotensive. So or, you have to tell, you'll get the venous excess and you'll put the uh, two. Yeah. We'll insert large two bore cannulas, yes, into the anti cubital fossae, yes, um, then and we will uh, take blood subsequently, yes, for a full blood count, uh, use any and uh, group and cross match four yes. units, yes, and um, we will proceed with giving fluids, uh, fluid resuscitate. Uh, if the patient is Okay, it's uh, you have come to know that it's an RTA case, road traffic accident. Patient is in, 
is in hypervolemic shock, okay? Considering or keeping uh, the injuries in your mind, can you tell me what would be the grade of shock patient is in? See, the right foot is fractured there, ribs are fractured, clavicle. So what would be the grade of hypovolemic shock the patient is in? Please, how would you calculate it? So there are four stages, uh, four, yes. four stages of uh, hypovolemic shock. Yes, I'm not asking about the stages. You tell me what would be, how would you calculate this one? We would uh, check for the urine output and the uh, blood pressure and uh, the respiratory rate, so depending on these parameters and how uh, aware the patient is. So depending on what about the blood loss? Where would you have uh, injury that will predict how much blood loss you have already had and at what uh, grade you'll be, you'll be most probably? If so if it's 70, 750, long. yes. There is injury to long bones. Yes. Okay, um, then. If uh, it would be not less than grade two and grade three. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. Can you yeah, please? Um, yes. In that case, we would assume that the patient lost uh, thirty to forty. What do you see? Can you help me to read this image? It's X-ray. It says. Yeah, lateral uh, cervical spine X-ray. Yes. Would you see anything? There is a fracture at the level of C4. Yes, or wherever, anyway. How would you manage this patient? Immediately in the first survey, you realize patient is having something because when you're doing ATLS protocol, in A, you do the airway and cervical spine. So you realize patient is having some problem. What would you do? So we triple immobilize the patient. We we, we would use uh, two sandbags yes. or uh, blocks on the sides uh, and a hard collar around the neck. Yes. And tape as well. Yes. And that, that's called triple immobilization to prevent any movement. Yes. Uh, in the cervical spine. So what would you do next? You've brought the patient. You've got the patient in your ER and you have immobilized the cervical spine, what would be your next step? The next step is, is to stabilize the patient. Immobilize. All right, vitals, all right, yeah. okay. Once, then, once the patient is stable, if we're not able to stabilize uh, the patient, we would look uh, for a source of ongoing uh, bleeding or- Patient had multiple ribs fractures as well, so there mm -hmm. are certain organs. You don't know on which side patient has uh, which fractures. So if patient has multiple ribs fractures, there could be organs underlying the ribs which can yeah. be injured. So what would you do? You have to give me a plan quickly. The, the patient is stable, we could go for a CT traumogram. If the patient is unstable, we can go for fast scan. Fast, you'll do fast uh, because it's fast, it's quickly, you have to do it because you have to rule it out and patient is not stable in your condition in mm. this one. So you'll do the fast scan. Okay, what would you do next? Would you plan for a surgery? Who would you involve? So I've, I've put out Just imagine that you are in your uh, OR or a emergency and accident and this patient comes. So tell me every procedure that you'll be doing. So put out the trauma call and yes, if yes. the patient is uh, GCS is, is below 80 will be intubated. Okay. Uh, and then according the, to your opinion what is the glasgow coma scale of this patient right now patient is in pain but patient is or can be communicated yeah. yes so patient should be uh, about, all right yeah. yes so you have arranged the trauma call then what happened so after that if uh, we move from a to e once we reach the e we will yes we will uh, do the fast scan and the secondary yes. surgery. Okay, uh, you've done, there are, yes. There are any signs of uh, bleeding and uh, internally, then the yes. patient has to be taken to theater. You'll take the patient to theater, okay. If the patient has internal bleeding and you come to know that there is splenic injury, what would you do? 
depending on the splenic, uh, the level of the splenic injury. Yes. The, if it could be treated conservatively or yes, very or good surgically. Uh, how would you how would you determine if it will be the conservative management or do you have to open or do there the laparotomy? There are levels. I think yes, level grades of grade, yeah. injury. Yes. Up to grade three, I think you can manage conservatively. Don't quote me on this. I'm not 100% sure. But the grade four have to uh, have a, an, a laparotomy uh, to yes. sort of pack the spleen or to have a spleen. You can't. If there is cortical injury, then you can't save it. You have to do splenectomy. Mm -hmm. What would be the advice you'll give to the patient or what would you do in, uh, during surgery? Uh, if you have to go ahead with splenectomy, what should be your plan? In that case, the patient will have uh, to be on antibiotics post-operative. Yes. And he'll have to have uh, vaccinations. Very good. Yes. For, uh, encapsulated. Yes. Cannabis. Very good. Yes. Um, and post-op, you'll also give the advice. Yes. Yeah. Um, Just suppose if there is a liver tear or laceration, how would you go ahead then? Yeah, again, there are uh, levels as well, and then uh, it could be packed or might need a, a partial patectomy, depending on the level of the injury. Very good. Okay. Now, uh, what I feel, uh, we have to do more practice, you know. Uh, I'll I'll send uh, Dr. Abhishek shared recently. Wait, anyone else want to give feedback to Dr. Mohammed? Yes, Dr. Abhishek. No, actually, ma'am. Uh, I think uh, uh, he performed it randomly. He tried to do all his best. So I think uh, just best. go through. Yeah. Uh, so just go through the station. Uh, it will help you more. That's it. Yes.